gratitude to um, the associate professor, Dr. Widya Setiabudi, the Dean of uh, PSIP University Pajajaran. Thank you, Doctor, for joining us today uh, during this live presentation. Okay. Right, so next presenter is uh, Dr. Mudiati Rahmatunisa yes. from the De Department of Political Science, University Pajajaran. And Dr. Mudiati will present a topic on women's political representation in the era of university, Indonesia's transition towards democracy, a case from uh, Carbon University, a municipal, uh, West Java province. And a little bit of background of Dr. Budiati. She obtained her PhD in Asian Studies from the University of Western Australia in 2010. In her political science department, Mudiati is responsible for delivering a number of subjects, including gender politics, public policy and politics and governance in the regions in undergrad undergraduate as well as postgraduate. And Dr. Mudiati also has published a number of articles and books. So I would like to um, invite Dr. Mudiati to present a paper. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Um... Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning to my Indonesian colleague and good afternoon to my uh, Malaysian colleague. So, salam. Thank you. Uh, I will present my research brief actually entitled Women's Political Representations in the Era of Indonesia's Transitions Toward Democracy, a case from Cirebon Municipality, West Java Province. So it's part of West Java Province. My presentations will be divided into four main uh, subjects. Uh, first, I will briefly uh, 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 explain about introductions, which include the research background, and then continue with the methodology. Then uh, a big part will be the result in discussions, and will end my, my presentations with a short uh, concluding remarks. So I move on to the introduction. So basically, uh, my research is based on the universal belief and supported by many scholars that uh, democratic society not only requires uh, law enforcement and democratic procedures, but also equal participations and political representations between men and women in various decision-making sphere. Although a uh, study shows uh, the importance of uh, women's active role in public sphere, Empirical facts show that the really the Indonesian um, uh, transition toward democracy has begun since the collapse of uh, Suharto's regime in mid May 1998. Uh, the process has brought significant changes in many aspects including women, participations, and representations in political arena. So normatively, the uh, presidential instructions or impress number nine of 2000 is an important starting point for the struggle of Indonesian women to be active in the public sphere. So since then, Indonesian public has witnessed the birth of various policies related to the efforts of strengthening women political participations in the political sphere. Uh, once one of the strategic uh, regulations or policies, the affirmative actions policy adopted in the, uh, firstly in the political party acts of 2002 and the elections law of 2003. And this policy have been renewed to the latest uh, political party act as well as the uh, uh, electoral acts of the 2017. So from this normative perspective, it is difficult not to say that the uh, affirmative action policies in the form of gender quotas have the potential to facilitate the realizations of active participations of Indonesian women in various political processes. Nevertheless, the aforementioned regulations eventually have not been able to significantly improve the presence of female representative, both in national parliament or DPR, uh, as well as in local parliament or DPRD uh, in province or uh, district or municipalities level. 
as you can see here from the figure that uh, in terms of national parliament the uh, the present the female representative uh, never exceed 70 percent uh, from the total so my research questions then um, how can this be explained uh, what factors have caused low, uh, low uh, level of political representations of uh, Indonesian women? Are there uh, women's political empowerment efforts? So this is my focus of my research brief. Uh, then I will continue to the methodology. The study actually employ a qualitative research method, uh, which I believe uh, could um, uh, reveal uh, and comprehensively analyze uh, various issues related to the phenomenon of political representations and the process of women's uh, political empowerment. And data gathering techniques um, uh, uh, which I use are a series of interviews, uh, focus group discussions, as well as a documentary study. Uh, in terms of uh, data analysis, uh, it is done uh, simultaneous uh, when I was doing my field, uh, field work, uh, the process of collecting information from the field, and then I sort it. Uh, I categorize and then format it into the stories and image, and, and then uh, eventually the writing of the qualitative text. Uh, I also employ triangulation data uh, uh, to ensure uh, internal validity. Now I will move on to the uh, result. Uh, even though uh, the populations of uh, Chirobon is balanced between men and women, the presence of women in the public sphere is far from balance. As you can see here from the, uh, from the table, um, uh, there's interesting uh, figure. The table shows that women representations in the PRD or local parliament of Chirbon municipality has been very low. Yeah. In fact, in uh, the first period uh, after the collapse of Suharto's regime, uh, none uh, female representative. But then it increased slightly uh, during the next pair, two periods, uh, 2004, 2009, and then 2009, 2004, two, only two. So never exceed 5.7%. Uh, uh, then there is a significant progress. Uh, after the 2014 uh, legislative elections, when the affirmative action policy became mandatory, uh, not, 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 uh, no more uh, voluntary for political parties uh, in participating in the elections. Then there were, there, there were uh, nine uh, female uh, members of parliaments. Another interesting story uh, behind this significant progress is that uh, many of the uh, uh, female elected female legislator actually obtain uh, more votes than male members. Uh, nevertheless, this uh, success of electability uh, was uh, not followed by the acquisitions of strategic positions as chair of various commissions. So they are all members of commissions. So they, um, based on that, um, the study reveals that there are a number of reasons for the low uh, representations of Chirobonese women in uh, uh, this uh, parliament. The first is a uh, lack of interest among uh, Chirobonese women to run for the election. Uh, and then also a uh, low level of uh, confidence among women. And then um, there is a um, perspective among Chirobonese women that political activities will only disrupt family time, reduce their uh, uh, interactions with kids and husband. And then uh, not less uh, important reason is uh, there is lack of uh, political party support, uh, as well as uh, uh, there, are, uh, there was a lack of uh, Chirobonese women to support uh, female candidates as well. So this, uh, this, res this reasons uh, is also worsened by the lack of uh, program, uh, political empowerment program whatsoever, uh, uh, both by uh, either by the government or uh, political party or civil society organizations. So my study um, um, uh, categorize the causes of uh, le low level of uh, women political representation in Chirbonese um, parliament uh, into four uh, main categories. First, political, socio-economic, and ideological, and psychological or socio-cultural categories. Uh, this confirms uh, uh, also the uh, arguments by many scholars. 
So uh, last part, uh, concluding remarks. Um, my uh, study uh, conclude that a low level of women political representation is due to significant political, economic, as well as social barriers. And this is worsened uh, by the lack of uh, women political uh, empowerment as well. So even though Indonesia uh, already have, a, I think, a potential uh, affirmative action policy, but it's not enough. It needs to be supported by various efforts to eliminate uh, political, economic, and social uh, cultural barriers. And that's end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Mudiati, okay, for the very good presentation. So I will open um, the Q&A session to any one of the audience that interested to ask on the topic presented. Uh, saya ada satu soalan ya, Dr. Okay. Hilwa. Okay, terima kasih Dr. Nas. Uh, uh, silakan okay. bertanya. Uh, it's a very good presentation just now, but I'm just wondering uh, since uh, kita perhatikan di Indonesia uh, sudah ada uh, sudah pernah ada presiden wanita ya Megawati Soekarno ya yeah, uh, jadi uh, sewaktu dia uh, memegang kuasa tempoh hari Dr Nas saya tak dengar uh, suara doktor mikrofon termute Mikrofon. Ah, uh, mikrofon untuk mute. Tadi saya dah unmute, sorry. Oh, okay, tak apa. Teruskan. Ah, uh, daripada mula ke? Ah, uh, boleh juga daripada mula. Saya dengar sampai okay. presiden wanita aja. Uh, okay, presiden wanita. Alright. So maknanya uh, di Indonesia sudah ada presiden wanita uh, tempoh hari ya, uh, Megawati Soekarno Putri. Ya, yeah, so. Uh, uh, so I'm just wondering, sewaktu beliau uh, memegang kuasa di Indonesia, uh, tidak adakah apa-apa uh, uh, kaedah ataupun cara yang dilakukan dalam meningkatkan bilangan uh, apa wanita dalam uh, parlimen itu sendiri ya? Itu saja. Okay, terima kasih Dr. Nas. Terima kasih Dr. Nas. Uh, interesting question. Uh, I will reply in bahasa Indonesia. Because Dr. Nas, uh, bahasa Malayu pula. Uh, baik, jadi uh, ketika uh, Presiden Megawati uh, berkuasa pada saat itu, sebetulnya ada perbaikan-perbaikan uh, kebijakan, terutama dalam aspek uh, kebijakan tentang kepemiluan, ya partai politik dan elections. Tetapi itu pun uh, tidak bisa atau tidak dapat uh, meningkatkan juga uh, kehadiran perempuan di uh, lembaga legislatif. Jadi menurut saya ini kalau dari theoretically uh, substantive or symbolic representations itu tidak punya efek terhadap upaya apa peningkatan uh, representasi perempuan di uh, di lembaga legislatif begitu dokter Nas ada perbaikan tetapi ternyata tidak berpengaruh perbaikan baru signifikan manakala uh, 2014 uh, uh, affirmative actions itu menjadi mandatory no longer voluntary so we have to push uh, kalau misalnya voluntary orang pilih-pilih tak tak pilih tak, tak melakukan tak apa gitu. Tapi sekarang kalau mandatory ada sanksi tidak bisa ikut elections kalau uh, 30% candidates uh, itu tidak diikut sertakan di dalam list uh, proposed list by the political party. Demikian Dr. Nas. I got a question as well if it is allowed. Okay, yeah, one more question. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank, uh, thank you so much for Dr. Modi. It was very interesting presentation and research. Uh, you say that one of the way uh, that was done by the government to empower the women was to give a mandatory affirmative. Okay, I'm going to ask you from your standpoint or your or uh, according to your opinion, uh, can can mandatory affirmative be considered as uh, the way to empower? Because from my standpoint. It is more like uh, just forcing or insisting rather than uh, what to say, rather than uh, empowering. So, is there any other way was done by the government to empower the, the women? Uh, not only by just give mandatory, but for example, maybe just uh, by giving knowledge about the, the importance of politics to to increase uh, their their political interest. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sakti. Um, uh, interesting questions. Um, actually, uh, in terms of a theoretical perspective, affirmative, affirmative actions policy in, in, in the form of gender quota is part of or a type of uh, empowerment, political empowerment. Yeah, and we've done that. But actually, this is not enough. Uh, uh, based on Indonesian experience, the adoptions of uh, affirmative action policy compulsory uh, it still cannot increase uh, the number of uh, uh, women uh, MPs. Uh, as I said before, this is not enough. Uh, policies need to be supported by other efforts. Actually, in my, uh, my research brief, I mentioned several uh, strategies to, to be done by uh, the government. First of all, based on the problems faced by many women, Indonesian women, they have to be um, uh, encouragement and facilitations for, for women to run for the elections through programs such as additional funding, because uh, financial uh, become the main, uh, one of the important problem faced by women. They got no money to run for the election. So there is a need, there, there, there will be a, a, a need for government to support uh, financially. Uh, other than that, intensive training programs so preparing uh, women to run for the elections, this is also important. And you mentioned as well, uh, educating uh, all uh, the constituents that uh, the presence of women in the parliament is important. I think that's uh, well, some of uh, the strategies that we need to add to uh, the adoptions of uh, affirmative actions policy. I think that's my answer. Thank you so much. Thank Mr. you. Okay. Thank you, okay. Sakti, and also Dr. Modi for the very um, brief explanation. Okay, so it's just a little bit of uh, additional information. So we have uh, actually the last presenter, but uh, at this hour we have one more presenter. So there'll be two more presenters that will present. So for now, I would like to 